Hey everyone, welcome to this short demonstration on Autodesk Inventor's FEA or Finite Element Analysis Optimization Tools. My name is Daryl Corelli and I'm a technical specialist with Autodesk's manufacturing group. What I have open for you right now is a real-time photorealistic image of a car seat. I'm sure we can all relate to being in a car seat. Many of us were probably sitting in one on the way to work today. What I want to draw your attention to in particular though is the undercarriage of the car seat itself. What you'll notice is that there's a lot of different linkages, a lot of different mechanisms, a lot of different components here all welded together, functioning together, and we want to be able to determine if we have an optimal design for being able to handle right, a certain person or a certain condition of this seat being used. And if you're wondering what this product is, by the way, this is a product called Autodesk Showcase. Just send me a message if you'd like to learn more about Showcase. Taking a look now at a kind of a cutaway view of that same car seat, we're just looking at the undercarriage of the seat, minus the foam, minus the backing and all of that, just really the, the guts of the car seat itself. And um, what we have is a, a critical shaft here that's supporting a lot of the components in that car seat. And what I want to draw everyone's attention to again here is the size of the main shaft of the car seat, 15 millimeters, right? Because I want everyone to remember that value. Inventor includes a stress analysis environment integrated right inside of the core design engineering package itself. So what this allows us to do is to create different studies, different simulations based on uh, whatever kind of results we're looking for. If we're looking for static uh, FEA stress analysis results, if we're looking for modal, kind of like frequency results, different optimization results, th those are all available right inside of Inventor. Now I know what you're probably wondering, a lot of you are asking things like, oh, FEA though, I've heard of that before, that's really complicated. And what I'm going to show you is exactly how easy it is to use. Remember that 15 millimeter value, right? Inventor allows you to see all of the dimensions that make up your design here. And we want to reference this 15 millimeter value as the design constraint to optimize. But where the, where the optimization really gets powerful is in the ways that it can do all sorts of different what if conditions. So what that means is even though right now the value of this shaft is 15 millimeters, if I wanted to optimize this design to consider a 14 millimeter value, 16 millimeter value, we can set those values and Inventor will allow you to see those kind of superimposed design changes so that you understand the size and the scale of the change that you would like to optimize around. Further to that, we can set the goals that we want to optimize. So if our goal is to set a couple of different conditions here, one is that we know that the stress is within an allowable range, then we can set an allowable range of let's say 275 to 375 megapascals. We can also at the same time set a, a different constraint, which is we would like to minimize the mass or minimize the weight of this product, right? It's one thing to set a, a stress limit, but a lot of times we can easily reach a stress limit just by making things bigger or bulkier or heavier. But that's not necessarily the optimal design. Being able to minimize the mass here gives us a couple of um, conflicting goals that the software inventor will be able to optimize for. Speaking to the ease of use again, this is how we're going to set up this study, this, um, this particular simulation. It's just a matter of working from left to right in the toolbar. So you'll notice that I started with creating the simulation, creating the type, and then I identified the critical components that I'd like to optimize around. I've applied the materials, ensuring that I was using the aluminum material that comes with Inventor. And then we can go into setting a lot of the boundary constraints, a lot of the ways that the product is actually going to be supported and functioning in the field. So after we've been able to set some of the, the critical constraints to the way that the, this car seat actually operates, uh, the, the last main part of the setup here are a lot of the loads, um, you know, representing how is someone actually sitting on this seat or how is someone actually using this product, right? You have the opportunity then to apply these different pressures, forces, 
um, moments and torques and whatever it is that best represents how you want to test your product digitally is exactly what you can capture inside of our, our simulation, our, our FEA analysis environment here inside of Inventor. So now that we've been able to properly really set up the problem, it just comes down to meshing it and solving it. I've just been working from left to right the whole time. Those that have used FEA tools before or are familiar with analysis tools know the importance of a powerful mesher. An inventor has an extremely powerful mesher in the way that it recognizes small details and applies a mesh that's appropriate to a small detail, where, where it by default wants to use a slightly coarser mesh, perhaps for some larger, more bulk detail. But of course, we give you the tools to apply local mesh control, really local definition, in case you would like to increase the, the mesh density around a critical area of interest in your analysis, in your FEA simulation. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and solve that, that very easy to use problem definition setup that we just did. What I want you to remember is that when we're solving this, we're actually solving a number of different conditions here. We started off with a 15 millimeter diameter shaft, but we also asked it to consider a 14 millimeter value, a 16 millimeter value, all the while considering that the stress needs to be within an allowable range and we want to minimize the mass. So there's a lot of different permutations and combinations of uh, of analyses that are happening here inside of a single pass, inside of a single solve step. And there was no editing, there was no cutting or, or, or pasting of that solve. Everything about that was a real-time live capture. So now we can take a look at the results. And uh, when it comes to understanding the results, one of the first things I like to draw people's attention to is the way that we can animate or simulate the way that it would deflect or the way that it would deform if it was actually being uh, used the way that we loaded it. So we can see from different views and we can just verify that given the way that we loaded it, we're very happy with the way that the animation is playing to confirm that the problem has been set up and, and adjusted correctly. But beyond this though, we can actually take a look at the hard numbers. We can see what the real stress values are. We can see where the hot, the hot spots are, the hot stress regions are. We can see where areas deflect or deform the most. We can see where the most sag is happening and whatnot. And we can even see the amount. In this case, a little over two, two and a half millimeters. So even though that animation looked like there was a lot that was moving, in reality, that's just an over-exaggeration to make it easy on our eyes to see how is this product deflecting. Most importantly, though, brings us back to those optimization goals that we set. So we can see that when we have a 14 millimeter shaft diameter, we have a stress value of over 500 megapascals, not in the allowable range. We do have a, a fairly light weight in our product, though. We can see what a 15 millimeter value does, reduces the megapascal value. And we can also see what a 16 millimeter value does. And what you'll notice is that our goal table here actually updates to tell us we have a pass. We have a passing condition. This value at 16 millimeters is the first, and in this case, the only value that meets the allowable range and thus is the lightest configuration of our design. But that's the power of these optimization goals, is that it lets us do these different values, these different con considerations, all within a single simulation. So what we can do is we can very quickly apply that now optimal design back to our product design itself, and we can re-inspect it to see that, remember that 15 millimeter value that I asked everyone to pay attention to? It's now 16 millimeters, reflecting that new optimal design based on what our integrated simulation and analysis tools in Inventor was able to determine for us. So thanks for watching that short demonstration on Inventor's FEA capabilities. If you wanted to learn a little bit more about Autodesk digital prototyping and additional simulation tools, please go to autodesk.com dp. If you'd like a, a free 30-day trial of the software I was just using to try some of the simulation capabilities out yourself, please go to autodesk.com slash inventor test drive. If you want to see some upcoming webcasts that I'll be delivering or some other events in your area, uh, feel free to go to autodesk.com slash manufacturing center 
And as always, if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to ask me at ask.daryl at autodesk.com. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day.